Hey, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I'm going to share a couple of my games uh, with you, with uh, one of our club members, our chess club members, uh, Open File E. I just call him Open File. Or I could call him Open File E. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a very good chess player. Um, we are going to... Boris Ospasky and I, by the way, for an announcement real quick, and then I'll get into these games. This first with his open file, and I'm playing the black, but uh, Boris Ospasky and I are going to be do doing a, a live chess match, our WWF first chess match live tomorrow, and... It's going to be Rocky Mountain time in the United States at 10 in the morning. And if you're in the UK or if it'll help you adjust the time, if you would like to come and watch us have a lot of fun, uh, it'll be at 5 o'clock in the UK and surrounding areas. So we're, we're both setting up our OBS software. We were together this morning on Skype trying to get it worked out. I don't know if it's going to work out exactly right or not. We're going to try. This is our first time, so be patient with us. But we're going to start trying to do some more live broadcasts. I think that would be a boatload of fun where you can see us smack talk each other and then play a game of chess, and we're going to analyze it as we go along, and then we'll play a serious game, and then we'll do a, an analysis of the game and all that. But it should be a lot of fun. So come and join us live tomorrow. Today, and I don't have my stupid calendar. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Anyway, today's Saturday, June something or other. Good grief. I don't know what day it is. You think I have time to worry about that? I've got to study chess. I suck at chess so bad I'm getting trounced. You guys are just beating me mercilessly. Thank you, it'll teach me how to get better fast, but talk about knocking the rust off me. Holy Shishka and Bob! Did you know that they're brothers, Shishka and Bob? That's why it's called Shishka Bob, right? Yeah, whatever. Just stop it. I am the Shishka Bob Professor! Woohoo! Okay, now, I, of course, immediately refute that threat. <laughs> In open files. Yeah, whatever. Just... Play the game. Play the game. Now look at this pansy move. Queen Gambit. He can't play Queen Gambit against me. That's my opening. Who does he think he is? So, of course, my second move, hitting the center and directly refuting this waste of time move of his. Yeah, I'm going to show him how to play this game. He thinks he's bad. He ain't nothing. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting warmed up to do the smack talking with Boris and I. We're trying to figure it out on OBS, how to do it live with both of us in the same screen. Uh, neither one of us know enough about it. I've, I've been watching videos. We're working on it. Maybe some of you have some hints. If you do live broadcasting, live streaming, um, I'd like to hear from you. Or join us tomorrow and let us know. So we're going to try like crazy to, to do some live chess and have some fun in reality. Because everyone needs a laugh or two, and I am going to trounce Boris. We've been bad-mouthing each other all week in the chess club, and it's a lot of fun. We're having fun, of course. We're good friends. I mean, neither one of us can beat each other. <laughs> Heck, I couldn't beat a blind church mouse right now. I am getting so beat. I am so rusty. Every time... I get up and go, and something happens that takes me away from chess, and I am really going to try to not let that happen anymore, because I really do want to get good, and the way to get good, of course, is play people like Open File, and uh, come and join our chess club, Backyard Professor Chess Club on Leeches. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of phenomenal chess games. So here are two of them that you've never seen before. I decided let's do the... Uh, Let's do something like the Joko Piano and uh, Open File went with me. <laughs> I've already got him, baby. Watch this stellar move. E6. Look at that. You can't break through that fortress. E3. Look at that. I can't break through that fortress. 
Well, it's a stalemate here. We may as well toss in the towel. Except first, I gotta let the horse go wander around in the uh, prairie and enjoy himself and eat some good food. He is the first to draw blood. C takes D. Now, this, you know, I mean, it's not really because we're more of the Joko Piano four night defense. The four nights come out to here instead of there, but close enough. All four nights are out, you know. Mere technicalities, but you know what? It is important. This is not the four nights defense. That is not a technicality. But, you know, so this exchange variation gets really interesting really fast. It is said to favor white. Let's see if that holds out. Of course, then against me, it'll hold out with, with ease, I'm sure. Wait a minute. C takes... C takes D. I took him now. Boy, holy crap! I'm backwards. I should have put the black down here where I'm playing so that I could show you my magnificent strategy, but you can see it anyway. It's just backwards. Bishop B5, and he's going to pin the uh, knight to the king. And I'm going to get rid of the castle because I've played open file several times. We're somewhat even. I think he's ahead of me in our overall matches. Rightly so. He's a very good player. I think he plays me just to build himself up. <laughs> oh, no, that could be taken as an insult. I don't mean that as an insult. Not to my friend Open File. He is a good man. I don't know what he's good for, but he's a good man. Don't tell him I said that. It'll swell his fat head. Now, I thought, okay, and, you know... I'm trying to get something going so that I can keep him off kilter, right? Because I know he just plays like an animal. So I went ahead and took the hole. Knight e4. And here he comes. Hasn't castled yet. I haven't castled yet. And I go, well, that wasn't... I'm going to have to uh, drop it back. Bishop g6. And now look at this. Queen a4, and he's got a real nice battery. And I am thinking, you know, I'm unfortunately, I'm liking his position better than mine at this point. But it's not like I'm making uh, a lot of unnecessary pawn moves like bumping the H or bumping the A or anything. I'm developing. I just think his position is stronger. I, I think it's better. And uh, so I'm trying to generate something, and I'm thinking, this battery, you know... I don't like that. I really don't like that battery. And he bumps his bishop back to e2. Now see, what a coward. A real bishop would have just took the pawn out of spite and said, Ha! You mean nothing! But no, open file wants to play good chess, so he comes down to here. Like a good chess player would. And of course he did. Well, I got a castle. You guys, I'm just, I, I've got a castle. That's how it works. I'm not going to sit out there, and he pushes. He's obviously coming at me on the uh, king side. That bloody rat! I'm going to make him pay for that. You know what I mean? I'm telling myself, you know, nobody can push G5 against the backward professor. Or backyard professor. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, it's time to get serious here. Now let's show my stuff. Ha! F6! And I know that the F-pawn, you never want to push it and all that, but we're not, technically we're not in the very beginning, and I am castled, and I can use this now as somewhat of a weapon, even though, yes, it's true, it slightly weakens my king side, but it helps fortify the center. Now, see, he's got one, two, three pieces on that, and I only had one. So I pushed the F-pawn to, you know, I'm, I'm just... <sighs> you remember how I rant and rave about positional chess? Well, take a look. His position is just better than mine. That also gave him more space. Uh, I've been playing my good friend's Merlin, who just trounces me, he's also from the UK. He, he plays magical chess. He's good. If you can get a chance to play Merlin, do so, but don't think you're going to win unless your name is 
Kasparov or some buddy like Carlson, something like that. And I'm also playing Akermantia, and he's so good that I can't possibly compete with him. But they're being nice enough to kind of work with me through my games, telling me, yeah, you're you're worse than 800, all right. You're, you suck. But no, they're being very nice, and, and they're helping me out. And uh, I freaked out under, who was it that I was playing? The Real Grambit. Oh, The Real Grambit. You are so good at chess. Well, when I grow up, I want to be like all you guys. But the real Grambit was helping me understand my first game that I played, and I just got blown off the board. And he cramped me. And the cramping really freaked me out. So this is a psychological aspect. And the reason I'm sharing it with you is because psychologically you start getting cramped, and if you're like me, you start getting tense. I've got to learn how to relax and just work with it, right? So here, I, I realized I really don't like being cramped that much, but it's something I have to learn how to play with. So here we go. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. And here he comes, h4, securing that wonderful post. Three, and I've only got it hit twice. Well, technically three, four with the backups, but... Uh, He's really solid there, isn't he? That, that's a great move. And I thought, well, let's back his bishop away a bit. Yeah. D went ahead and took. And my F pawn that I so gracefully pushed up went ahead and took. And now, rather than the bishop, the knight takes with a beautiful fork on the knight and my bishop here and I thought well I've got a I've got that square covered with the knight I'll take it with the knight yes and now open file castles long giving him the partial file with my queen across from it and this this type of an alignment issue, I personally, I know, I need to pay more attention to this because that can be deadly. The pawn is now pinned, so I have to be careful because that should have told me that that means that knight is no longer safe. Unless I have another piece, which fortunately I do, covering the knight. But I've got to watch this guy. And there's a pawn bump in the future, potentially, right? So there's so much to look at, and you have to be able to in chess, yes? Well, the assessment of both my knights was that I wanted to come back to here because this queen and this bishop... And this bishop has a pretty clear shot across the aisle. There's going to start being some scissors involved. And that was, that was kind of starting to concern me. And I had to make sure that I tried to have all of my pieces coordinated well, right? This was my thinking at that time. And I hung the pawn. You dope. I... I backed the knight off, and this see, this is something that we amateurs, we really have to start paying attention better. Me, me. You guys don't have this problem, but I do. When I move a piece, what do I weaken? What am I leaving in my wake? Well, I blocked off the pawn, the important D pawn, dog dork, and he instantly took it. Now there's a great mini lesson right there. It's worth seeing the game for that point. Be real careful how you treat your central pawns. I treated mine with spurn and I got slapped backhanded because of it. So this is a good lesson for me. I'm going to try hard not to do this again. And I decided, you know, I've got a great fork here. I'm going to do the fork on the rooks. Let's just kind of hit piece for piece here and see what happens. 
So after I took the F2, he comes to C4 and I can see a discovery coming up. And I can also see a very wicked discovery coming up and a double check where he can get my knight or he can come to here, fork my rook and take my rook, etc. And that was starting to freak me out. And I'm saying, man, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get my king out of the way. And I'm not sure now if I should have forked him on this part right now. I probably should have, but instead I went, I did a more passive move rather than an aggressive move. I began to react to him because his position is just seeming to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And now here comes the push, Bishop H, or I mean H5. And now I did, I thought, okay, okay. I'm going to quit trying to react to him. Yes, my, my king defending bishop, but this is a really good fork. However, h takes g6, and I took, here was my thinking. The, the second I, I messed up. I took the bishop instead of the queen. And you're going, what a dunce. Well, yeah, what a dunce. I end up taking the bishop thinking I was going to try to survive one more move because, what was it? I thought I had a really good, I thought I had a, a good move with my knight here to push the queen out. Something like that. And so I wasn't worried as much about the queen as I was about that double whammy attack with the pawn here. That's what I was afraid of, if I remember right. I don't know. I was seeing ghosts in the night, and that's just unfortunately how I rock and roll. Oh, it was the rook taken h7. Yeah. Yeah. And I was afraid of the, the bishop being there with the discovery and the checkmate after that. So I needed to take the bishop, not the queen, was my thinking, right? And so now I have to go back to g8, and I was afraid the bishop was going to be there. And now you've got a, you've got a checkmate, right? So that's what I was trying to avoid. I was trying to survive for one more move, so I took the bishop thinking I was going to be able to, and then his queen took c4. <laughs> and I said, you know, it just doesn't matter. And I went to rook c8. And knight took e7. Double check. Checkmate. <laughs> so, he played that very well. He had everything going for him for the position. I just couldn't. Look how far back I, I have a lone knight way out here. And I never did get that fork in, did I? My thing, I, I, was, tr I was worried about this battery here. He really had me, man, because I was thinking if I take that, it's just going to facilitate him putting the rook there. I should have taken that rook, perhaps. Then his rook would have went to there, and I would have survived a little longer. I don't know, but I am not trying to take credit away from him. Open file, that was a great game, and I deserved I just wanted to show off his double-check checkmate. <laughs> I told him in the comments, I said, wow, that was beautiful. That was something else. Yeah. Showcase an open file. So hang on, and I will do our next game that we played between open file and myself. <laughs>
want to show this game. One, it's a grudge match for me, right? And now I'm the white and he's the black pieces. I wanted to show the power of the knight tactics. Uh, open Files knight in this game is just electrifying. It just blew me away, man. We were laughing all the way through. I, just as soon as I thought I had him, his knight came to the rescue. It was... Anyway, get on with the game, dude. Okay. Holy shish kebab! I've been told that that's a well-liked phrase, and I'm known as the shish kebab idiot, so there we have it. I can't let my fans down. We will shish kebab together through chess, stardom and fame. Yeah, whatever. Hey, let an old man have his glory dream, okay? I, of course, unlike Open File, opened properly with the Queen Pawn, just like he did the last game, only mine was proper because I'm the one that played it. <laughs> whatever. Dude, come on, You're, you've got delusions of grandeur. Yeah, the Dunner-Kruger effect. I saw a comment in one of my videos, previous videos, that I display the Dunner-Kruger. Yeah, I probably do, you know. I'm probably guilty as charged. So anyway, I'm going to throw the Queen Gambit at him. Oh, Checker99! Shout out to Checker99! Congratulations, dude! He beat me for the first time. Uh, he is starting to up and come and get better and better and better. Way to go. And he sent me several games. I will get some videoed for you, dude. I will. Um, he's been sending me games like crazy. You're overdoing it. You're you're overwhelming me, my friend. But uh, yeah, he beat me the other day. That cotton-picking pesky kid, he is something else. I told him here in about two years, none of us are going to be able to beat him, and it's only going to take two more weeks. He's learning very fast. I'm, I am deeply impressed with him. Don't let that go to your head, kiddo. Now, look at this. An, an open file said, you know, the thing I love about playing chess with you, dude, is some of our games get so flippin' slapdash wild and crazy. And so let's make this one the same way. And I go, are you kidding? You scramble my brain every time I play you. So he does this. I'm going, all right, I'll deal with it in a minute. Right now, I'm going to keep doing the opening. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, all right, yeah, that's good, that's good. Let's do the opening. So, okay, thank you for working with me on this. You know, give a, give a guy a break. I just dropped the bishop on his head, and it probably broke his miter. I feel bad about that, so he'll have to get over it. And now he he is going to break the pin. Of course, that's a, that, is, that is, in terms of chess lingo, a relative pin. Absolute pin, of course, is against the king. All other pins are relative, although it's a great pin against a queen when your opponent won't so insolently and rudely block the pin like Open File does. See, he has no respect for me. I can't blame him. I don't even have any respect for me. <laughs> All right, now, Queen C2. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to try to be trickier here. With open file, I have to because he's so good. It just it just makes me ill how good he is, especially when he plays me. And now he's gonna he's gonna advance in the center and semi close that off. But I think I can whittle it away. Uh, it is supported twice. The pawn. I am attacking it twice, so it's not as secure as it could be, but it does gain him space. We're in the opening part of it at this point. Yeah, but I really did not like that move. So, I went ahead with the exchange variation of this, although it's probably not the classic proper exchange variation, because his pawn isn't here. It's already way advanced, so he can't exchange it, but I went ahead and took on d5 anyway. Uh, I have the pawn covered. It's not a big deal. If he does take me, then I can take him back. Granted, the queen is here. Um, yeah, this pawn is keeping my knight from advancing very well. I'm not 
fully developed yet. So there's a little bit of uh, pressure, not a whole lot. I'm not overly worried about it yet. He brings Bishop F5. Now notice the one thing, and I mean uh, Shakespeare and, uh, oh, I've got uh, Sooner Warrior. I've been playing a guy named Sooner Warrior that just completely crushes me. He's an excellent chess player, but he does stuff like this. He develops speedily. Notice, he's keeping up with me in development. Now, now I think it's because uh, I probably made a few more pawn moves, not the unnecessary ones like this one and this one. Um, you know, the those really don't help you when you're trying to improve your chess. Just try to get your whole army developed. But the, the speedy development, I wanted to point that out, always makes for a tougher game, and it does increase the odds of tactics showing up. And this game is full of them. We'll see. Just... Keep watching Bishop F5, and then I will quit talking and push E3. I decided, all right, hold it. Let's stop him right there in his tracks for just a moment. Let's see what this does. Again, more development, and I had another pawn push. Bishop B5, I've got to keep getting on, getting on. This pin was blocked. This pin is valid, right? If I can pop a rook right there, just a, a, an alignment with the queen. Yes, there's crap in between us, but a rook right there would be real sweet. I'm just, I'm just trying to look things over as I'm developing, and he castles. Yeah, he castles already. There's another indicator. Uh, and again, another pawn move. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. C6. <laughs> See? Now he's trying to copy me. Maybe I need to, maybe that's the secret against open files. I need to make more pawn moves so that he'll imitate me. <laughs> Who knows? No, don't. Don't. Try not to make too many pawn moves if you can help it. And I'm... Yeah, practice what you preach, cowboy. I am really making a lot of pawn moves here. Well, I have to come back to c4. Now, c4 is a really good square for the bishop because it's across from this f pawn, although now it's really supported. Once you castle, the weakness of the f... The king in the beginning is the only one, but with a castle, that kind of disappears. And, and so, but still, that alignment is a real good alignment, I'm thinking. And in some respects, I've got him in a sort of a scissors configuration, right? I think at this point my bishops are somewhat better, but he's got a very solid defense. Not a lot of weaknesses. I mean, maybe this pawn here, but there's... And maybe I should have shot for that. This this one's not real. I mean, it's propped up with a few pieces, but it's going to fall. I hope. Please make it fall! And then B5. So, no sooner than I point it out that he corrects that so that he eliminates weakness. And he's putting... He's... This man is rudely trying to steal the initiative. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? That's how he plays. That's great chess, right? Even though it's rude. I mean, stealing the initiative from me. Who would have thunk it, right? Great move. And now I did... Uh, I did come to here... So now he has, I'm hitting his knight, uh, he does have single pawns here, so now he's kind of getting out of sorts. Yeah, I, I, we've kept the tension here for a few minutes, but he's getting out of sorts. I'm starting to get the impression, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, I actually might be making headway here. He does come here to bump on my bishop. And so I like this diagonal. I really do with that pawn. So I want to keep that bishop. I can come to here, and then if he takes, I take. And then I've got this diagonal. Now, that could have been a good discovery. 
I suppose. But I wanted to keep this one against the king side at this point. And he comes to queen c8, giving support to his bishop who was hanging. I wish I'd have noticed that in the game, you know. you got to look for the pieces that are not supported very well, and that one was just sitting there. Tactics can arise when you have pieces like that. I've got to keep trying to pay attention. And when he made that move, that's what I was telling myself in my head. I said, dude, that, that was an undefended bishop. Could I have done something? So I want to start paying more attention to that. It kind of woke me up, realizing we're, we're doing a lot of really interesting different moves here. I am two pawns up. Uh, my position really isn't, I mean, I've, see, I've got a bishop out here hanging like a dipstick rookie. I've got a pawn up there that, I mean, what are you doing, dude, all by yourself? I'm really kind of sloppy here. Uh, let's see what happens. He went to queen c8, and now I went ahead and took the pawn. Now... this point, I'm recognizing a couple of things. I'm playing somewhat sloppy, but I'm up three pawns. That can begin to have a serious effect. So if I'm up three pawns and I'm playing somewhat sloppy, fast and loose, then so is open file. So now is the time to slow down and start looking. Now. I, I gotta quit just making moves. Let's get some purpose. And haven't I said that? And You know, I say one thing and then I go to play chess and I play it completely different. It's, just, it's the dangest, most annoying thing about myself is I just... I have to start putting this stuff more into my games, right, if I want to improve. I keep telling you guys, oh, hey, by the way, speaking of which, I had a wonderful new online friend, Dynamic Boy. Yeah, buddy. Shout out to Dynamic Boy. Way to go, man. This young man, and he is very young, uh, told me in a private message that he said he found my videos, what was it, September September 2019, just last September. And he got online and started playing, and he's rated about 1,400, right? Well, today he's 1,900, and he played me several rapid games. At rapid chess, I just, you know, I'm going to have to play a whole lot more if I'm going to get good, but first I want to get good before I keep playing those. Those don't really help you improve prove your chess assessment. He just pounded me. He threw me all over the board. Now he's rated at 1900. I wish my videos had that effect on me, man. So way to go, Dynamic Boy. Good kid. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to him. I'm enjoying meeting so many of you, you know. It's just, it's fun. It's really great. And I appreciate you willing to take the time to play chess with me, even though I can't give you very good games yet. I'm still blowing the rust off myself. I do have support, finally, for midget here. My bishop is still out there. In the, you know, I'm just, I'm due. Look at this. This guy is just, there's no, you know, I'm just not playing very coordinated chess right now. So it's time for me to... Whoa, and let's put two and two together here. If I get too sloppy, that can't be good. So, now where was I? Knight take b5, and then e takes f3. You know, I didn't, you know, here's the psychology. I don't want double pawns in the middle, and yet... I really should have taken it. I should have done more. But he did have it supported twice, and I'm I'm flailing around out here, so I would have... It, it's just not looking good. Again, this is how it is with open file. He just 
somehow he really finds a way to cook my goose. Queen F2. Okay. So I came to came to Queen F2, and he went ahead and kept proceeding onward when I should have just simply taken it with the knight, right? So I'm deserving a just punishment here. So I went ahead and took it, G2, and then notice, Bishop E4, skewering my queen and rook. You know, talk about falling asleep. I've got a bishop out here. I'm getting skewered. I've got a knight hanging out here. I do have a solid center, but I've got this diagonal, but I am playing way too sloppy. Right? And now I'm starting to pay for it. That's part of the lesson of this video. It happens to everyone if you play uh, too sloppy, right? Well, I am able to prevent that skewer. At the same time, it's a developing move, and I give support to my bishop. So, okay, stay calm. It was things like this that made me start realizing I really am too sloppy here. I have to slow down and start playing better chess. If I'm going to improve my chess, I can't do it this way, right? I'm just not being very coordinated enough. And now he comes, bishop b4. Check. So his bishops are becoming very difficult to manage. At this point, I have no choice but to move the king. Right? I can't castle. Castling's out now. I'm sure not going to put that knight there to block the check because I'd lose my queen. So he's got... He's really taking the initiative away from me, if I ever had it in the first place. He's taking control of this. It's time for me to really say, do I want to play real chess or not? And then he does something like this. The queen and the knight are coordinated. Notice the coordination with the bishop and the knight. Now the queen and the knight, check. And I'm thinking... Dang, man, am I going to lose here? This is becoming bad. This is not good. And now he brings queen f5. He's got the back rank covered with his rooks. So technically, that pass pawn isn't bugging him. Yeah? You see the point there? Now he's really on a barrel, a double barrel attack at me, and I'm going... I really am in trouble here. What do I do? What do I do? I said, okay, first things first. I have to keep the king safe. So, where's the target? What can I do for target? I do not want to open this up for the, for the queen to start exchanging down. I really don't want to do that, so let's hit a target first off. So I hit the target, right? And he goes, Bishop D3 check. He's weaving the mating net around me, right? And I'm going, okay, I can go to D1 here. And now, knight takes e3 check, forking my king and queen. And I'm going, holy disaster, Batman, except he missed something. And I was thrilled. <laughs> He missed my bishop. So I was able to simply take the knight. And his jaw dropped. In the comments, he's saying, Oh, man, I can't believe I didn't see that. So neither one of us are playing stellar chess here. But it's really getting complicated. And on move 21, which this is the first piece was taken. 
everyone moves and finally a piece falls. I thought that was really interesting. So, Rook A to C8. Get a direct target. Just come and get the direct target, right? And I thought, well, he's out there in La La Land. This bishop is much more dangerous, so I'm going to acquire a target also. I'm going to ignore his threats, because really, I mean, I've been playing kind of slapdash fast and loose, and if I keep reacting to his threats, I lose the initiative. It's time for me to start playing better. So, do the swap. If that's what he wants, do the swap. And he said, okay, yeah, I'll change. Not a problem. I'll take the knight. And then I thought, hey, you know what? I have the file directly across from the king. You remember me telling you about alignment issues. A queen across from a king is a good thing. And this bishop just happens to have a diagonal. What if I make a threat of mate in one? That will virtually force him to address this issue. Here he's been weaving a mating net around me, and all of a sudden I have the checkmate threat. So this is the value of don't lose your nerve, keep your eyes open and keep looking. So now it's his turn to react to me. And he does so. I honestly thought there's not a lot of pieces, but now that I've got my rook here with this open file and the bishop with that angle and the knight that can come up into here pretty quick, and I kept this diagonal all the time so I can keep f6 uh, in check, I honestly thought he should have simply swapped the queens. Get rid of that file and get rid of that pin with that bishop there because he's got a pin on this side also, swap the ladies. But that's not how he played it. He played it like this. And I realized at that point, aha, uh -huh, I'm going to go ahead and take the piece. I missed it. I confess I missed it. Yeah, bishop takes the rook, you clown. I did get the bishop that was more concerning me because his queen was across this way with his other bishop. So I took the bishop thinking he was going to move the rook and he missed it and took the pawn. So blunder on his part, in my opinion. And so I took the rook I, and I told him in the comments, I said, I'm not going to miss that twice. <laughs> I'm not going to let you keep that rook and he goes, dang it, man. So I got that. And then, see, here's the play that was starting to spook me because his rook, he was thinking, right, yeah, he lost the rook, but realistically, he's got me in trouble here. I am close here, but he is close here. That's how close it is. So, yeah, it cost him a rook, but he's got the attack without question, right? The only thing I can do to save my bacon is right there. Take the bishop. And now an odd thing happens. <laughs> a really odd thing happens. He made another bad move. And I was very fortunate. He doesn't do this too often. Maybe he was distracted or something. Not only did he shut out the rook by doing that, that had the angle on me, that had the file, but he didn't see that I could simply take the queen. He missed it somehow. I don't know how. There's a psychology in chess and, and I said, well, thank you for that gift. And he just, he came on court. He was so mad at himself. I said, dude, stay calm. Let's keep playing. It's okay. And no sooner 
then I did that. Then here comes that knight again. Check with a beautiful fork on my queen. <laughs> so, tit for tat. My queen and the bishop, as far as that goes. But it's it's my queen he's after. He was so mad he couldn't hardly stand it. And I said, "Wow, that was fantastic. That was really really good, right?" And then I said. Knight e3 check, yeah. And then I went to king d2, and he took the queen here, and so, so, I still don't have my rooks into play, and that was part of the stupidity of this game. But, centralize, and in time, I might be able to surprise him with this. He came back to rook c8 to take my bishop, and I realized, oh no, we both ignored that. I mean, I've had a piece in prize now for... So see, this isn't... It, it's a game where the lesson is, take your time, don't play so fast, and look at all the pieces every time. That's one reason I told him I wanted to play this game. Not only for some of the tactics, but for the slop in it. Because this does happen to us, right? So this is what we have to watch for. And this is an illustration of that. Yeah, I'm telling on myself. I have egg on my face. Okay, yeah, well, at least it's scrambled egg and it tastes delicious. I can eat it with bacon, <laughs> right? But it's not bragging chess. It's important to see the effects of not coordinating your pieces and moving too fast so that you both miss plays. And I'll bet if there was ever a computer analysis done on this, I'll bet it just massacres us, right? But watch what he does here. He comes out to f5, hitting my bishop, of course. And then I go bishop d5, check. Okay, so we've got a check. King goes to h8. I've got him in a corner. And I've got him scissored. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Alarm bells are going off in my head. And I'm going, wait a minute. There's a checkmate up here. I have to pay attention to this. And I have a rook right here. So, so all this time I never activated my rooks. They're finally going to get a roll to play. And it's time to pull that trigger right now before I regret anything else that he's going to do. So I immediately took that pawn. I said, oh man, I'm coming in. I'm coming in hard, hot, and fast. And then he does rook c2 check. He more or less gave up because he saw it anyway. And then he went knight e3 check and he took the bishop. <laughs> that fork again. And I was afraid I was going to checkmate him this next move. And I was afraid that he got the... I, I just moved completely out of the way so that there were no more forks. I'm tired of getting forked by that stupid knight. And then it dawned on both of us. I said, you better take that bishop so that there's not a checkmate. And then it dawned on both of us. Well, there's a checkmate anyway. Duh, drop the Anastasia's checkmate or something like that with the uh, bishop crossing and the rook in. So this game, the reason I wanted to show it is not to brag that I beat him. It's to, and, and we both kind of talked about this afterward, neither one of us were really on par. Uh, we were we were loose. We were playing too fast. We were playing too loose. There were some fabulous tactics with his knight that just, I felt, kept him in the game somewhat until he made a really bad rook blunder there. If he had stayed back here somehow, it wouldn't have been quite so bad, although I had him in a good cross, which just got lucky because he had a bad move. But I had plenty of bad moves also. So, chess is the game of games, and if we want to get better, this is how 
not to. I'm telling on myself. I'm getting back into chess as Open File is also. He hasn't played since I disappeared about four months ago or so because of issues going on in my personal life. I haven't been able to be consistent. Some of you have and you're coming back at me. I mean, you're rated online as 18 and 1900. And the problem is I bragged about beating Dark Side of War. He's a 1900 player. And now all you 18 and 1900 players decide, oh, great, now you're willing to play us and you're just trouncing me. It's not fair, really, because I can't give you a good game yet. So, I mean, it's all casual. It's all fun. But I will get back. I will get there. That's my commitment. I'm going to get better at chess. As open file is, we're going to beat the rust off of each other, as well as me getting the rust beat off of myself with all the rest of you. So anyway, there's your chess video. Remember, live tomorrow, tomorrow morning in the United States, 10 a.m., live Rocky Mountain time, we're going to go live, Boris and I, with our WWF chess match. Uh, the club thought it would be fun to have a little fun because of all this COVID-19 depressing stuff. Although now that we are reopened, and of course, we're going to get a second wave of COVID virus, and it's going to kick our butts. Uh, that's just the way it's going to work. There's just nothing we can do about it at this point, I'm afraid. So we're going to have some fun. We're going to mix it up. We're going to play some chess. We're going to analyze some chess. We're going to try this live thing. Maybe we can start doing some more live streaming that makes it even more interesting and pleasurable. And the group can participate. We're going to try to set it up. We're both new to OBS. Um, and so... We're going to try to set it up. I think we've got it to where we can have a live chat box also. But hopefully, if we can set this up right, both he and I will be live on the screen. You can either go to his YouTube channel and watch it from there, and you will see me and him playing the game, and, and we will be able to talk to each other. Or you can come to my YouTube channel here, and you will see, hopefully, him and I together live, and we'll be playing the game from my side of the of the board. So, anyway, it's hopefully we can make this a lot of fun and interesting and educational. And in the meantime, remember, be safe, but be happy, do well, have fun, be good, enjoy life. We are here at this point. Yes, things are kind of bad, but we can handle it. So. Alrighty, I will see you guys tomorrow live right here or on Boris's chess channel. Or you can alternate between the two as far as that goes, yeah. So tomorrow morning for you in the United States, tomorrow afternoon for you guys in the UK and the rest of you, whoever you are in the world, if you can somehow find what the time scale is for your place, that would be great. We want to see as many people as we can. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Remember, comb your hair. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> you guys don't have to. You're not going to show up live, but we will. All right, see you tomorrow.